The Akantine, Banjo Ancestor, Illustrated Poem Story of an African Legacy by Steve Levitt. Dedication. This book is dedicated to the Jola people of the Casamance region of southern Senegal, the Gambia, and Guinea-Bissau in West Africa, among whom the traditional folk lute, the Akantine, also called the Ekantine, was first known. It is dedicated to all those, known and unknown, named and unnamed, over the many years who contributed to the Akantine's creation, playing style, and musical tradition. This book is also dedicated to all those who persevered through terrible times and circumstances, and who, among many other things, brought with them knowledge of the Akantine and similar instruments to the Americas. This knowledge led to the development of the early gourd banjos and their later descendants leading to our present-day American banjo and its music. Profits from the sale of this book will be donated to the Akantin Center for Senegambian Folk Music, Mandanary, Gambia. Acknowledgements. First, I'd like to acknowledge Baba Chuck Davis, internationally recognized artistic director of the African American Dance Ensemble, Durham, North Carolina. Uh, Baba Chuck first introduced me to the Akantin when he first asked me to perform in the 2008 dance concert, Bluegrass, Brown Earth, portraying the story of the banjo from the West African Akantine to America. The poem, From Africa to Bluegrass Sound, Let the Strings of Akantine Resound, that I wrote and performed as the narrative storyline in that concert, later became the inspiration for this book. I would like to acknowledge Gambian Jola folklorist scholar Daniel Jata, for first pioneering the research that brought attention to the importance of the Akantine in relation to the early gourd and Southern American banjo, and for his ongoing efforts to preserve and continue this musical tradition. It was through reading Daniel Jata's many articles that I first became acquainted with much of the Akantine's vital history. I learned much of what I know about traditional Jola playing of the Akantine, from, uh, both from numerous published descriptions and from watching videos of Jola musicians. Three in particular are master Akantin players Jules Ikana Jata and Remy Jata of Mlomp, Casamance, and Sana Ndiaye uh, of Senegal. I would like to generally acknowledge as a group all of the banjo musicians, collectors, researchers, and scholars who have contributed to the knowledge base of the banjo. Regarding the Akantin, I would like to thank a few individuals for their contributions, which I have found extremely helpful. Professional entertainer musician, banjo historian Shlomo Pesco in New York, ethnomusicologist musician Greg Adams in Maryland, banjo collector historian Ulf Jagfors in Sweden, banjoist researcher Nick Bamber, Great Britain, musician banjo researcher Chuck Levy, Florida, and musician actor banjo researcher Paul Sedgwick in Massachusetts. I would like to thank instrument making musician. Charles Wazir Johnson for giving me the opportunity to purchase my first Akanti. I would also like to extend my sincere appreciation to a wonderfully skilled instrument maker, John Pringle, Eflin, North Carolina, for taking the time and doing the research to carefully follow traditional Jola techniques in fabricating several Akantines for me. Finally, I would like to thank my wife, Joan, for her patience, for proofreading the manuscript, and for her never-ending support throughout this project, as always. This is a fascinating story based on recently uncovered and seldom known history about the legacy of a distant ancestor of the American banjo, the West African Jola Akantin. Its unique combination of a specific playing style, along with a key structural feature, both found in the present open back five string banjo and its music, strongly suggests the Akantin as an important predecessor of the banjo we know today. This history recounted in rhyming narrative form, along with illustrations, follows the banjo from its roots in West Africa, across the middle passage of the transatlantic uh, slave trade, to the Americas where it continued to evolve into its present form. My interest in increasing public awareness of this compelling and important history was the inspiration and driving force for this book. You are about to read a story that most people don't know. 
a story rooted in the history of the present day banjo. It is an amazing journey and once it has begun, it will become even more compelling as you use your imagination. So now let it begin, let it unfold, let the story of the banjo now be told. Across the continent of Africa, traditional peoples drum and dance to help them do their work and also to enhance the fabric of their daily lives, honoring birth, marriage, death, and for sacred ties. The rhythm, songs, and dances are considered as one, sometimes sacred or religious, and sometimes fun. A rhythm song and its dance are each called by the same name, not separated from each other or performed for entertainment or personal gain, totally integrated into everyday life to honor, celebrate, support, and help reduce strife. And with this as background, now let us behold the story of the banjo's ancestry in the distant days of old. Hundreds of years back in time, no one knows exactly when, in Senegambia, West Africa, it all did begin. The Sen Senegal, the Gambia, and Guinea-Bissau are the West African nations where the Jola people are found. In the village of Kanjan Ka, as the story is told, along the banks of the Casamance River in southern Senegal, live the rice farming Jola people, among whom one day appeared an amazing new musical instrument that none before had peered. A stick attached to a skin covered gourd and having three strings, they named it a kantine, a traditional folk instrument with short top string. Played by the common folk, not griots or professional musicians, the music played was secular and not of religions. The stick made from papyrus stalk, they called bang, bango, or banjiolo. Sound familiar? Similar to the name of what we now call banjo? A cut open calabash gourd covered with stretched goat skin through which the stick did pass a short way out the other end. Three different length strings from palm roots they were cut, were tied to the stick bottom and then attached higher up, using movable cord tuning rings, one for each string, to create the needed tension for the proper notes to ring. Stretched across a movable biped bridge sitting on the skin, the strings were pulled tighter until the desired notes did begin. They named the notes of the three open accounting strings Khan, John, and Ka, to honor the birth home of this wonderful musical thing. Khan, for the short top string note, played by the thumb, with thumb sometimes dropping down to John on the longer middle string. The top and middle strings each had almost only a single tone, the open string sound, played by thumb and known today as the drone. Finally, Ka, for the open note of the longest string, this string placed at the bottom, on the accounting. Three notes could be made by pressing this long string, the open note ka, and two more that let the accounting sing. With five notes altogether, a pentatonic musical scale was played, with Khan the fifth note, John the root, and ka the flatted seventh made. To play the accounting the traditional way, the back of a finger came into play. First, the fingernail of the middle or index finger brushed down on the long bottom note string to make it sound. Followed quickly by thumb on top of middle string making backbeat. The rhythm sent out were really neat. The Jola people could dance to those rhythms alone. No need for help from drums or bones. All those drums and clappers they sometimes did play together with the Akantin to sing and enjoy the day. This downstroking style of playing strings, please note, the Jola is called Utek, which means to stroke. This downstroking playing style survives to this day, originally taught by African-American musicians to Euro-Americans learning to play. Back in the 1600s and for hundreds of years, Africans were enslaved and brought right here to America, where they were sold to slave owners to work on their plantations and in their homes. Captured in Africa and chained on slave ships, sometimes no space between them, not even for hips, taken by force to leave their loved ones and homes and travel the deadly seas, afraid and alone. 
bad food, stench-filled air, sickness and disease. Much to their peril, many did not survive the seas. This middle leg of the transatlantic slave trade from Africa to the West created profit for slave traders against all protest, providing enslaved beings to work against their will for the gain of their owners, to toil and to till the soil for the benefit and personal gain of a powerful ruling class, slave owners lacking any shame. They were brought to the Caribbean and then to America's shores, among them many Jola people, who with them was brought the Acantine, it is said, for music to be played, hoping better survival rates of slaves on those ships would be made. And to this day, the Ejola story of old is that Acantine players were warned and told not to play music down by the river at night, for many disappeared and were, f and were forever out of sight. It was thought that the devil had taken them away, only shoe prints in the sand were left there to stay. The slaves were taken and they were sold. No drums allowed in many places, they were told. At times in the Americas, laws banning drums were passed, and by many slave owners, a similar die was cast. Slaves playing the drum was often feared, but through resourcefulness and creativity, their traditions persevered. They kept their spirit and culture alive. They took their rhythms and improvised by instead of a drum using body, hands, and feet, as in Africa, to play their rhythms and keep the beat. Keep the beat is meant to mean survival, maintaining cultural roots, identity, and community themes. Sometimes with little food and often with not much hope, the bone of the ham they used to flavor their soup. They passed that bone one family to the next, sharing the flavor that was left showing strong sense of community, caring and support, making the best of the terrible situation in which they were caught. They were creative, resourceful and wise, and the bone of the ham literally and symbolically helped them survive. And the name ham bone, some have taken to mean the will to survive by creative means. And that name ham bone was later given to improvised body rhythm. Because that body rhythm, it did the same. It helped an enslaved people to remain in touch with their cultural traditions and ancestry. They saved and played their rhythms as a way of setting them free. Free from oppression, free to hope and dream, free to find self and self-esteem. Hand bone, pat and juba, hand jive, African tradition, they helped survive. And in order to create that hand bone rhythm slap, the body was played with a pat. Hands hitting arms, legs, face, and chest to create a rhythm that was liked best. Now exactly when and how the Acantine came to the land of America, a mystery still remains. During the Atlantic slave trade, other instruments came as well, but in this story we focus mainly on the Acantine itself. Whether brought physically by slave ship on sea, or instead created from a shared memory of the Jolas and others who in the Caribbean, living as slaves, started making gourd instruments from what they could remember and save. The Acantine's influence helped sow and contribute an important seed. And over time, along with many others, its roots did spread and feed a wonderful musical tradition leading to so much today. Folk, country, blues, jazz, soul, gospel, rock, hip-hop, and bluegrass played. Now listen closely, if you can, to hear that beautiful sound. Imagine within all this music hearing the distant echo of the Acantine resound. An African treasure, it will certainly remain, only recently understood for its historical significance and claim as an important contributing root and living ancestor as well of the current American banjo for both its structure and musical spell. But it must be remembered and it must be said that the Jola Acantine was not the only spike lute ancestor that led to the birth of the gourd banjo in the Caribbean and its later evolution in the American scene. In the region of Senegal, the Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, other similar gourd body three-string lutes have been found. The Manjak have the Buchundo, the Bujogo have the Nopota, the Papel, the Busundi, along with Kusunda and Kasinta of the Balanta. With the exception of the Kusundi, all have a short top string, but the Akantine alone 
combines this uniquely with downstroking. American music would never again be the same, forever altered by the African musical sensibility that came infused and influenced by a new richness and feel with incredible syncopated rhythms having tremendous appeal. So over time, the Akantine and other West African lutes were altered in the 1600s in the Caribbean and later where the lutes arrived and were vaulted into the forefront and leading the way for the early slave gourd banjos created back in those days, which themselves then evolved over time and in places into the four and laid a five-string banjo that hold past traces. But the Akantin's basic uniqueness has never faltered, even though over time its descendants certainly have been altered, in that the way it was constructed and also played is the basis of our present banjo instrument today. A short top drone string and down picking style, a unique combination that has lasted all this while. Banjar, Banzel, Banza, Bango, Banji, Banshore are some of the names attributed to gourd banjos contributing to the same. Across the years, in many places and forms, the evolving banjo and its names were certainly born. And today we say banjo, this is the name, but its original spirit remains unchanged. From the Akantine and similar lutes to the gourd banjo, over time the Akantine's looks and sounds were destined to go. The early gourd banjo soon had flattened neck and tuning pegs, and over time many changes that ultimately led from fretless to frets, and in America over the years from gourd body to pot, later on resonator and tuning gears. Beginning in the mid-1800s, the minstrels had quickened the pace, minstrels traveling around and playing music in blackface having learned from African Americans how to build and play well, creating enormous public interest and popularity of the banjo. Minstrels see, however, a terrible disgrace, making fun, ridiculing, and denigrating people for their race. During the Civil War, many banjo players joined the army on both sides. Finding a banjo after a battle was often considered a great prize. Those banjo players taught untold numbers of other soldiers how to play. After the war, soldiers spread enthusiasm for the banjo across America in every way. From the South to New England, from New York to cattle drives in the West, from the Appalachian Mountains to California, interest in the banjo found no rest. The times were changing in this place. Musical change was occurring at a very rapid pace. But that short top string played by thumb, a drone, and the Akantin's down-picking style had found a new home. Frailing, thumping, and claw hammer became their new names. Fingers brushed down, then the thumb came. Afro-inspired syncopated rhythms filled the land, helping create the sound of the old string band. That old string band music had its origins for sure in the fusion of Euro and Afro music traditions that came to America's shores. The English, the Irish, the Scottish, and more brought their songs, music, fiddle, and dancing to explore. White, black, and Native American contributions, we are told, together and apart, helped this American music unfold. And with a shuffle on a fiddle by a rosin bow, and with bones of spoons to keep the rhythm flow, people listened to that sound, and they heard it ring. They listened to that fiddle and banjo music sing. And with some dance steps on the floor, buck dancing, flat footing, clogging and more, they danced those rhythms and kept the beat and played that music with their feet. And then one day it did show. Bluegrass three finger up picking on the five string banjo. This up picking style has a history of its own with, e with echoes from Africa, it has been shown. Evolving and changing over the years with many contributions pleasing to the ears. They picked that five-string bluegrass style and clapped their hands and gave a smile. Now recall, back in early 1900s, commercial promoters realized a great demand and a string band prize. Hillbilly, or old time, for white music, race music, for black, they promoted the former and held the latter back. White music was recorded, promoted, and flourished. Black banjo and fiddle players were rarely encouraged. Much of the black community ignored the banjo, 
a reminder of the cruel parodies of the past minstrel show. Until more recent times, now, with great revival of interest, the black banjo is coming back and will hopefully persist. The banjo, music, and dancing continue to this day. Their traditions and evolution are hopefully here to stay, bringing excitement and joy to those who partake an important part of our history. Make no mistake. So in conclusion, what can be said to summarize a story that you have just read? From Africa, from brown ground, the ancestral homeland of the banjo and its sound, all the way to this very day, the banjo and its music continue to evolve and be played. Where it's going, no one knows for sure, but one thing is certain, and that is, there will be more. This is a living, evolving cultural expression and tradition with deep African roots combined with present-day renditions. And this is a story you will hopefully recall. Pass it on to one and all. A part of history we must not forget. An African legacy lives on yet. This legacy, not always obvious, but present all around, continues to shape our world and its musical sound. We must continue to listen, to learn, to recall, and never allow its disappearance at all. So now thank you so much for your time and for your imagination, which you use so fine. Remember when you feel it, go ahead, dance, clap, and shout, and keep the beat when you hear the music play out.